Hello all and welcome to another nugget of the day. This is nugget 13. We've all had failures in regional anesthesia and we often wonder why did the block fail? One of the advantages of using ultrasound for nerve blocks is the ability to recognize anatomical variations. These may account for failure of a block especially if we use low volumes. In this nugget we focus upon how to identify anatomical variations of C5 and C6 nerve roots while performing an endoscalene block. In this picture, the brachial plexus can be seen emerging between the two scalene muscles, the anterior scalene and the middle scalene. Therefore, we think that nerve roots at the interscalene level must always lie between these muscles. However, this may not always be the case in all patients. Let's have a closer look. Here, we have placed the ultrasound probe at the supraclavicular level, identifying the subclavian artery and the brachial plexus superolateral to it. As we move the probe proximally, the C5, C6 and C7 nerve roots can be seen between anterior and middle scalene muscles. Each nerve root can be traced more proximally to its vertebral foramina beginning with the C7. Next are the C6 and C5 nerve roots. All of these follow a linear path to their respective foramina as shown in this video. A distal scan demonstrates this better as C5 followed by C6 and finally C7 nerve roots can be seen to emerge and line up between the scalene muscles. The anatomical variations in the interscalene area are quite common. While up to 33% have an intramuscular passage of a nerve root, in 8% cases, the C5 root lies ahead of anterior scalene muscles. These variations are often easier to recognize after an injection has been made. Let's have a look at three videos demonstrating these common variations. In this first example, the nerve roots C5, C6 and C7 can be seen in the interscalene groove. Upon a proximal scan, the C5 nerve root can be seen to first lie above the anterior muscle and then pierce it to lie within the muscle. In this second example, the nerve roots C5, C6 and C7 can be seen in the interscalene groove. Upon a proximal scan, both C5 and C6 roots can be seen to roll over the anterior scalene muscle and then pierce it to lie within it. Eventually, they are seen to emerge from their respective foramina. In this third example, the nerve roots C5, C6 and C7 can be seen in the interscalene groove. However, upon proximal scanning, the C5 nerve root is seen to lie entirely over the anterior scalene muscle rather than piercing it. It eventually passes medially to it, finding its way to its foramina. So to summarize, the anatomical variations at the interscalene level are common. The most common variation is the intramuscular path of C5 or C6, while the less common variations include C5 nerve root lying completely anterior and then medial to anterior scalene muscle all the way up to its foramina. Thank you.